You look at those top agents, they get so much repeat business from the same people. I had one client refer me 15 people this year. I had one client refer me 25 people. These are the magic pills over and over again. But you have to be able to demonstrate what you can do for them. You know, when we, when we grow your SOI, you know, you've got lots of different groups in there and you can categorize in different groups just to let you know. I mean, I've seen people do it lots of different ways. You know, you might have your A, B and C members, like your A people, your A members are people that are your past clients, which means they've used you before and people that have referred you business. Like those might be your A group. Your B group might be, you know, you know, people, you know, pretty darn well. Your C group might be people that you barely recognize by name and they barely know you by name. You haven't talked to them in a while, things like that. It could be grouped in different categories like past clients. It could be people in a certain geographic farm that you know, or from a certain company that your maybe your wife or your husband works at. Um, it could be grouped in, uh, in what we're going to talk about today is um, a vendor database or an affiliate database. It's your business to business database. And I'm going to refer to it as vendor database just because that's kind of the, the industry term. But I don't want you to get confused when I say vendor because I'm not just talking about like your mortgage consultant and your title company and your home warranty company. Those are vendors for realtors, right? But I'm talking about anyone that has a business. So anyone that you could possibly refer a client to. And that's what we're really talking about is referral partnerships because we want to market business to business. Almost all top agents that generate a ton of business get a lot of their business from the same sources, from the very same sources. Over and over again, repeat business from someone that refers them a ton. Most of you guys do that. Give all your buyers to the same loan officer. Give all your transactions to the same title officer, escrow officer. I mean, they make a landfall off you, you know? And you're gonna find most people do that. There's a lot of people that refer their real estate needs to a lot of people. And if it's not you, if you're not getting someone to refer you a lot of business, we got a problem there. You, you may not be in partnership with the right people. The people that you're giving all your business to or like the most or use as a dentist or use as your doctor or maybe employ as your accountant. If they're not sending you business, they're sending it to somebody. So you're clearly not their favorite real estate agent. You might wanna think about that. I do business with people that want to do business with me. So be real thoughtful around that one, okay? So what we're going to talk about today is that vendor database, business to business marketing, building professional a professional network. And so this is a way to both grow your sphere of influence because we're going to establish new relationships with people we don't have and we're going to talk about how to do that. And then we're going to also talk about different ways you can add value to it and contact your sphere of influence in a way that we add value and come from contribution, but we're still asking for business at the same time. And that's really hard to do. You won't find many ways you can do that in this business where you can actually add value, come from contribution while uh, genuinely asking for business at the exact same time. Okay. But the key to doing that is to develop an organized referral network and it's gotta be organized. Okay. So we need to have it systematized. Because if we systematize our network of vendors, of affiliates, of partners, then we can actually have something to show prospective members of our network, vendors, to justify why they should want to be a part of it, okay? We have to create a system that enables us to visibly show people what we offer. We have to be able to evidence our value. So just telling someone, you know, hey, Mr. Accountant, I'm going to start using you as my accountant. Wouldn't it be great if you sent me all of the people you know they're looking to buy or sell real estate in return? It's okay because you are at least offering to use him as an accountant, but you're really just asking for him to send you business. You're not evidencing how it's going to benefit him at all. Make sense? I mean, you are off saying that you'll use him as your accountant. I'm sure, you know, just like all the other real estate agents that he helps does, but what's going to make you different? What's going to make him feel comfortable in the way you're going to treat his clients? That's where it's very important that we demonstrate the value. Okay. So let me, let me show you the first way we're going to demonstrate the value. 
Okay. And this is not systematizing so much as it's, it's just doing a little bit more than saying, I'm going to use you as my contractor, Mr. Contractor, will you refer me all your business? I'm going to use you, Mr. Electrician. Can you send me all your clients that want to buy or sell real estate? The reason none of, none of you ever say that kind of stuff is because it doesn't feel good. It's you're just asking, you're not giving anything. It's not an even trade. That's why you're uncomfortable asking for business without offering anything in return. If you've ever wondered what people tell you to do that, go out and ask for business. Yeah. The reason it's uncomfortable is because you're not giving anything away. It's just not a fair trade. So for you to get comfortable with your dialogues, it's really important that we actually have a message that your heart's behind. Let me give you an example. Here's a way we can do it, but I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to let you guys stay in your same shoes. You don't have to change clothes at all. So you guys sit there in your realtor clothes and, and wear your realtor hats. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to come at you like I'm a mortgage broker or loan officer lender, whatever. Okay. So stay there. And here I come. I'll say, uh, who am I? I'll pick on Luke again. Hey, Luke, it is Brian. Oh, you don't have to do anything, Luke. Don't worry. But thanks for, you got all, you got all ready. You don't have to do it. I'll just say, Hey, you know, here's the deal, man. I really want to start doing business with you. And I've got this problem and I could use your help. A lot of people are refinancing right now because the low rates and they're, and they, they, they think they hear that rates are going to go up and up and up and up. So they're refinancing. And a lot of the people that are coming to me are also looking to get pre-qualified for purchase money loans because they want to buy a house and they know it's a hot market and they want to be ready. So they're getting pre-qualified, but then they also have a house to sell. So I need to find some agents that are willing to list, to take these listings and help these people list their houses for sale so then they can turn around and buy a house. So Luke, is that something you'd be interested in if I were to send some listings your way? And I mean, obviously every one of you is like, this is the best phone call on the planet. Right? So if you give something first like that, then you ask for something like this. And Luke, if I were to send you some listings, would you have any problem sending me one of your buyers every now and then just to give me a test spin in return? And you know dang well, Luke, Luke's loyalty to his lender just went out the window. All loyalty is gone. In fact, all of you just threw your loyalty out the window to your lender because of what we would do for listings. Now, all I'm asking, so I gave to get. I didn't just give my business. I, I tell them I need a future source to send all my clients to, right? And aren't we in a position in real estate? We are the center of the referral spider web. We are the absolute center of it. This makes sense? Everything comes through us. Someone moves into town, they need a dentist, they need an electrician, they need a doctor, they need a daycare facility, they need an auto repair mechanic, they need an accountant, they need a lawyer, they need all those things. Why? We're the only person they freaking know in that part of town or in that city or in that community. So long as we tell them we're your person to go to, I'm gonna be your own personal Angie's list for this area. Come to me first, I'll tell you everything to do. So long as we tell them that, which none of you do, none of you do, but good realtors do, good agents do. So if you wanna be a top producing agent, it's not that you like you buy a bunch of online leads or you do stuff like that. It's because you avail yourself to your clients as the person they should come to for everything. And then when they come to you for their needs, all you need to do is find them a who that meets their needs. And you become this wizard with this huge sword in the middle of your entire community that wields all the referral power that all the vendors know to come to because you're the one that dishes out money left and right by referring all these clients to all these different vendors. And that's how those vendors then give you clients back because they want more of it. So if you look at you know, all the top agents generate the majority of their business from their sphere of influence. That's been proven time and time again. If you want to know where the majority of their business comes from, it's from these referral partnerships. So if you really want to know the secret pill in real estate, this is it today, what we're, we're talking about. You look at those top agents, they get so much repeat business from the same people. I had one client refer me 15 people this year. I had one client refer me 25 people. These are the magic pills over and over again, but you have to be able to demonstrate what you can do for them. So the first layer is saying, Hey, I need a partner for your type of industry. If I refer you people, will you refer them back to me? 
So the first line is to have the conversation. And I'm gonna give you some scripts for that. It's real simple. I don't need you to even follow any other scripts other than the one I just said, but I'll make it a little fancier for you and, and give you some of those, okay? Now let's talk about other ways we can evidence value of being in my network, other than me just giving you business and then you giving it to me in return, right? Because it is kind of fun. You know, I'll give you some, you give me some, that pressure keeps building. You know, if I give you a client, you give me a client, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep, keep each other happy. Because if I give you five clients, you don't give me anything. I mean, obviously something's wrong here that, you know, like you better give me something or I'm not gonna give you anything anymore. In fact, I might even pick up the phone call and say, hey, Mr. Accountant, hey, I, did you take care of the Johnsons? Great, and you met the Donaldsons, the Smiths, the Vasquez. Okay, you met all those, uh, those are five. So as far as I know, I gave you five clients. That's interesting because I don't think I've gotten any clients referred by you. <laughs> Laugh a little bit, make it kind of funny, then kind of get serious. So when do you plan on referring? You see what I'm saying? I, I came through with my problem. You watch, you leave that conversation after saying that, you'll start to get business because he knows he's not gonna get any more. Make sense? So that's a two-way street. That's a referral partnership. It works both ways. Someone that just slacks and doesn't give it back, they're, just, they're not working it, okay? So that's the important thing there. So when that mortgage broker called you, be that person. The way that I made Luke feel was like, oh yeah, I like this, I'll take your listings. You can make everyone feel that way. If you're the guy that calls an attorney and says, man, I really need a probate attorney. I don't have one. Um, and I have clients all the time come to me that want to buy a probate property or have their property in probate. I got to have someone to send my clients to. If I were to send you a bunch of clients, Mr. Probate Attorney, would that, would, would that be okay with you? They're going to say, yeah, that's great. It's just like me calling Luke. Everybody wants more clients. So spread the happiness. Give, give, give. True coming from contribution. All you got to do is be organized about it. Okay? So let's look at some ways we can be organized about it. Okay? So this is one of my clients and also he's one of my coaches. His name's Rick Fuller and um, this is his website. There's Rick right there actually explaining something to someone. And then if you click on his tabs, you can see down here, he has got Rick's picks and you can see his business directory. And you can see, you know, on his website, and this is something I might be showing a potential accountant or vendor that I want to work with that, you know, he's got his, you know, for people moving into the, you know, the Bay Area, which is where he is, he, you know, you can pick an alarm company, an appraiser, a cinematographer, an auto repair, auto sales, banks, carpet cleaners, estate planning. He's got his own business directory that all these people have agreed to be a part of. Does that make sense? You can even fill out the application online to become a partner of his, to be on that list. So you might just send a link to someone and just put your name, your business name, and all of a sudden you might be able to get on our list. It's an application for it. Here's your website, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he actually charges 99 bucks to be on his website. Just to put some teeth in it. Create skin in the game. So he's got that vendor appreciation. Now, here's a different one. This one's a little bit this is uh, Danny Byer Real Estate, and she is in Kansas City. You can see she's the number 12th ranked agent in production out of 12,000. And if you take a look here at her resources section, you can see she's got a nice list here where she's got direct links. So if you're a client of Danny Byers and she says, who do I go through through my cleaning? All of a sudden you can just take a look who's the attorney I'm going to use. And she got a big list, right? And the little link to all their websites is right over here, including their phone number and email address. So she creates this big resources list. And a lot of our agents have that and just put on their website. You guys all have websites where you can do that as well too. create your own vendor list, preferred vendor list, affiliate list, network partnership list, um, client concierge list, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how that looks. Okay. And with Danny, one of the things she does is she has the Danny buyer discount. Okay. So she'll tell him that like, you know, every one of her clients, she says, Hey, can you just give them some sort of discount for me? That way I can call it the Danny buyer discount. I don't care if they mark their price up and discount at 10, you know, 10% and then discount at 10%. I, you know, I don't care what they do as long as there's some sort of Danny buyer discount. 
So that's the only, you know, that's her only, I'm not gonna charge you to be on my list. I know you, I like you. What's more important to me is, I want you just to be on my list because I know the service you provide. The only other qualification I have is you create some sort of discount so that when I tell them to ask for the Danny Buyer discount, they get one. I like that. I like that a lot. So that's the idea there. Now, both Danny and Rick, and I don't know that Rick doesn't do that either. I'm just, I just know Danny does. You know, when they actually are approaching a new vendor, they have this system that is very visual that they can show you that you're gonna be a part of. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna be a part of my system. I need an attorney. I don't have an attorney. I need to get an attorney on here. Do you wanna fill this spot? Here's what it looks like. And it shows that you have a formal network of formal partnership and that website is kind of like a home base for it. Of course, you can go old school and print it out on a piece of paper and include it with listing presentation packets, buyer consultation packets. Totally fine. That hurt. That's nice too. It's one more thing you can show vendors you do for them because you want to be able to show the vendors you do a lot for them. So if you haven't printed out in your presentation packets or even you know in the PDF format with both your buyer consultation and your listing presentation packets, great, put it there too. It's another reason to have packets because you can evidence to vendors your system. Almost everybody has an app, a mobile app, right? On your mobile app, you can list your vendors. You can give your app to your clients to use, right? In there, they can have access to all your vendors. So it's on your website, it's on your vendor list. Again, is anybody gonna use your app for vendors? Probably not, probably not, but it's one more thing we can show our vendors that you do for them. It's establishing that value so that we can effectively come from contribution. Now, probably the biggest thing you can do, and we've talked about this in our social media and stuff, is to promote their businesses online, especially social media, share their posts, go do a Facebook Live at their place of business really quick to talk about how great they are, like a community service, do posts about their business, Everybody likes that. Everybody respects that. I just want to give my accountant, John Templeton, a shout out. Every year this guy has me, you know, our estimates are in line. I, I never have any surprises. He's way ahead of the game, very attentive to my needs and all my questions. I just want to shout out. Any of you need an accountant out there, man, you should give John Templeton a, a call. He's my guy. You do that for your vendors. You spread that kind of happiness. Man, they give you business back. They appreciate it. Especially you tag them in the post, tag their business page in the post too. Promote them. And it's a great way for you to be in contact with your SOI too. They see you out there putting stuff out there. Huge. Now, on top of this, another thing we can do, and this is, this is very, very popular. This got real popular during the pandemic because people had to get creative, right? Creating business to business Facebook groups for local areas business to business Facebook groups for local areas. This has become powerful, powerful, okay? Because you can just, all you're doing is you're creating a Facebook group that is designed for local businesses where local businesses and owners can advertise to one, each other, one another, collaborate, network with one another. And then of course you, the agent, you're the ones who created the group so you control the content, you can you know, interview members of the group, look for vendors as parts of the group, promote people in parts of the group. It's your own little playground that you can keep other agents completely out of. Powerful. Let me show you a couple of examples that have both just generated more business for these two agents. They're, they're really, really great. So for those of you that are in the central coast of California, you may have seen Tiffany Hernandez and she started this Central Coast Strong group, this Loyal to Local, and it's in, it's a group in Facebook, and it's called Central Coast Strong. And look, she started this about a year and a half ago, and she's got four, over 4,600 members in it, okay? And she calls herself TH Homes Group. Jack Hernandez is her son who's on her team. Here she is and her son, and she's interviewing a local gym owner and posting in the group. Um, so she, and here's senior ta Sancho's, I, I don't I'm assuming this is food. Yeah. Tacos. And they're, they're just posting themselves marketing. Here's a financial coaching company, someone, the wine history. These are all people other than a herd that are posting all these different businesses are posting in this group, marketing to each other. She's barely posting at all anymore. Right. Here's senior Sancho's back at it again. Right. Look, here's a local boys and girls club promoting a job fair. 
you know. Um, again, lots of activity in this group. Over 4,600 members, all these different people talking about different businesses, collaborating. Um, and then she shares things that help everyone. Every now and then she interviews somebody in here, which is really, really neat. I'll scroll to the top and I think I can find some of those where she's, you know, she's singling out and doing interviews of different local businesses. Here she is, like I said, interviewing this, you know, this local job, you know, and all, you know, this local uh, gym, I should say, all the way through. She'll, new restaurant will open up. She'll go there and shoot a video and market it. So here she is perceived as this person that is this community advocate that's always giving all the time, giving resources back, helping. You know, in their area, if they're saying that you need to start wearing masks indoors or whatever, she's saying that. If there's a place where they can go get free COVID tests, she's saying it. If they are saying that they're going to open up some sort of new, you know, cruise ship to the public that's coming to town, or there's a new flight from American Airlines coming in every single day to their local airport, she's saying it. She's updating people on all the news. If there's like a, a, a fog advisory and you shouldn't be, it's not safe to be driving in the morning, she's telling people about it. She's giving, 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 and allowing a forum that they can use to collaborate with one another as well too, okay? Another example, this is all the way in uh, Nevada, Iowa. It's just outside of Des Moines, right? This is their sm it's a small, small town. Okay, small town. Like I think there's 12,000 people in the whole town of Nevada, Iowa. 1.8 thousand of them are members of this group now. And this has been less than two years. Actually, Facebook featured their group as a, as a biz, as, as one of the top business to business marketing groups. And it's by a, a couple, um, Amber Olson and Mark Olson. Amber and Mark Olson are with uh, Remax there and they are the dominant number one agent by you know or team in the entire town for sure and again you've got you know a bunch of of, of people marketing you know different high school acts high school shows you know different community events promoting different businesses different specials different events like bingo at the legion <laughs> the city's looking for a new employee and it's become the dominant source to reach out to people in town. Here's a new couple skate, ice skating event coming up. Looks like a new Valentine's Day special at this coffee shop. And of course, now we're sneaking in some real estate. Here they are talking about an event they're sponsoring or some events they're sponsoring as a team for real estate. So they weave it in and everybody knows they started it there because they're posting every now and then about it because they can talk about their business too. They're the only, you know, and everybody else gets to talk about their businesses. So it's a strong, strong business to business network group that becomes a big value add for the community. I mean, a really, really big value add that everybody really appreciates because now they can go there and they can ask questions. It's free. It's a way to communicate with all these other people without spending a bunch of money and advertising. Makes life really, really easy. Really, really easy. Okay. So first thing we got to do, this makes sense. So these are different ways we can show the value. A lot of different ways I gave you that we can show value. So now we can, you know, speak to our vendors and say, Hey, we're going to put you in our vendor list, put you in our business to business group. We're going to put you on our website. We're going to put you in our buyer consultation packets, our listing consultation packets. Maybe you put them in your annual review, your annual property analysis form that, uh, you know, the PowerPoint, you know, you, you include your preferred vendor list in there for them as well too all different ways to add and show value. But now we got to grow your database. That's the key. So we've got enough way to show value. Now we got to actually figure out who's our target. Who are these vendors? Who are these affiliates? Who are these professionals? They're, they're going to reach out and show this value too. Okay. So I'm going to give you this and you can download this game, but this is our preferred vendor list. Okay. And it starts with accounts. It's alphabetical and you can scroll down and this is supposed to just rack your brain. Do you have an accountant? You're going to need for attorneys, you're going to need a general practice attorney, a real estate attorney, a family divorce attorney, because they all specialize wills and trusts, estates attorney, and a probate attorney. You don't just need one attorney, you need a lot of them. And remember, we want a lot of everyone. Okay. Um, and we got carpenters, carpet cleaners, home stagers, home inspectors, handymen, probably the most valuable 
lawn care, locksmiths, everything on here. So you got to rack your brain and think of all the people you know from this list. Veterinarians, who are you going to refer people to that need a vet? You got to find out if you don't have an animal. You got to find out who the people that have animals like, who's the best vet. You're supposed to be this knowledgeable resource in real estate, not just of houses, of everything that people need to know about the local community. They're supposed to go through you, which means you've got to know the who's. Who are the best of everything? So you've got to find it out because they're going to come to you. If you want business back, you must be the person that has the power of referral. So we need to establish it. They want to invest in a local, the local stock. Who are the stockbrokers in town that, have, that are considered the best, that are considered reputable, that'll make you look good if you refer to them? If you don't know, you better find out. Start talking to people, talk to other agents, find out who's good. Talk to friends, talk to family members. A lot of reasons to start conversations right now. Maybe you talk to some of these people about who they recommend. Maybe you call through your sphere of influence as you're making your daily contacts to ask them who they know. Hey, I'm trying to build out my vendor list. I got to refer out. You know what I need? I need a stockbroker. Do you guys happen to know who a good stockbroker is in town? You know, so you're asking your own people for their recommendations. Make sense? So you're going to know a lot of people to fill this list out. And then you're not going to know a lot of people. And you're going to need to reach out to people you don't know to invite them to be a part of the list. Make sense? So rock your brain. Now, I'm going to show you something else that's kind of cool. I'm also going to give you a workable page that kind of does the same thing. Some of you go crazy on spreadsheets. I'm one of those guys. So you can see here, who do you know from these industries? I also want you to not just put one person from each industry. So again, we start with accountants, we get into attorneys and you scroll down and here they all are again on a spreadsheet. So it's a workable breathing sheet. And you can add columns and rows to it, obviously very easy on Excel. I'm gonna share this with you too. But what I want you to do is go one, two, three, four, and five people deep. Okay. I don't want you just to have one attorney, one carpenter, one chiropractor. I want you to have two or three. Okay. So I'm going to share that with you and I'm going to tell you why. Here's why. There are a lot of lazy people in this world and a lot of frightened people. A lot of you are frightened. A lot of you know you should do all this, but you won't reach out and make these phone calls because you're frightened to do it. Well, guess what? A lot of vendors are frightened the same way. And I, and I, and I, do, I do cry for you people that are frightened because all you gotta do is, 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 is get the courage and do this a few times and you'll see it's so darn easy. And quite frankly, no one wants to work with a frightened agent. They want one that doesn't care what people think that gets, their, uh, that gets the word out there. So we need you to get courageous with your communication. If I have three chiropractors and I refer clients to these chiropractors, and after two years, only one of them refers me to clients. I found my chiropractor, assuming he's not a horrible chiropractor. If everything else is equal, that's my guy. And the other two didn't make the cut. That's why I need to be three, four, and five deep. Because I'll tell you, you spend too much time giving a business that to, to someone who's shy or too busy, who's riddled with all the excuses that low, low producing agents have. I can't because of this and that, and I'm too old and I'm too tired and I don't have any help and I'm too busy. And, you know, there's a lot of people in the world like that. And I personally don't want to partner with those people. And unfortunately, a lot of the people that you are going to have on your list are going to be those people. So that's why it's good to be one, two, three, and four deep, because you get rid of those people and the ones that actually do take the time and they're smart enough to refer you business back. That's going to be the person you keep giving business to. And you're going to find out once you have to give people business, you'll have plenty of it to give. Don't feel like, oh, I never have someone to go to a carpenter. Sure you do. You just don't send anybody to them or think about it because you haven't had a carpenter. But once you have one and you need to get in business, you will. Trust me. You have, an, you have entire offices with all these other agents you can refer to them too. You have tons of ways to get business to people. Agents just don't have that problem. All you got to have is the person. If you have a person you love, oh boy, you'll send them business. Okay? So that's why we got to be deep. We got to always be building out that stable and wait to see which one's giving us the business back, okay? Very important. How we find these people, like if we don't have a carpenter, but we need a carpenter, because we always have people with cabinet problems or something, we need someone to actually do some carpentry work. One way to do it is to call through your SOI, call through some past clients, make contacts by saying, 
that you're looking for recommendation recommendations of a professional that they've worked with recently that has given them great service. And you're doing that in order to help complete your vendor list to give to home buyers that are moving into town. Simple as that. You could also go on Google, check out local service ads for carpenters in your city, carpenters in Los Angeles, carpenters in Ventura. You can go on LinkedIn, search the same way. Craigslist, search the same way. But just because you don't know someone doesn't mean we can't go online and find them. Look for the ones that have the most reviews. Because believe it or not, the ones that have the most reviews typically do provide the best service. They're the ones that are focused on their professional reputation the most. If you go to someone with no reviews, I'm not sure these people have it together. That's risky to me. Someone who has a lot of reviews, at least our customer service is safer and I feel better about referring people to you because they're the most reviewed company in their industry, let's say. So just the fact you don't know these people should matter. This is a great way to get into a new, oh yeah, Angie's List too. Yelp too. Angie's List and Yelp are good in some areas, not good in others. You'll know very quickly by going on Yelp or Angie's List if they're good in your area. So understand, these are a way of reaching out to people that we don't know as well either. So we can know them or we can not know them. Either way, we're going to grow our SOI or we're going to enhance it by growing this network. All right, let me show you a few scripts that I am going to give you. You can see here, this is starting that referral business partnership. Okay, these are a few different scripts. A few of them can do the same thing. Hey, I'm John Smith of ABC Realty, and I'm in the process of creating a list of preferred business and service providers to give my clients, to give to my clients and include on my real estate website. Since I frequently have clients ask me for a good, you know, uh, carpenter, I'm looking for a trusted carpenter, a trusted professional or company to refer them to. I've heard good things about your company, and so would you and your business be interested in being included? Okay, so first I ask, if, you know, I, I tell them here, I'm going to give and I ask for them to say it's okay. And you say, great, I'd like to establish these professional referral partnerships to help grow each other's businesses as well. So if I were to refer clients to you, would you billing, be willing to return the favor and refer your clients that are looking to buy or sell a home to me with the insurance that I will provide them with the high level of customer service that you expect? So basically, I first say, are you okay with me marketing you and giving you clients? And then I say, if I give you clients, will you return the favor and refer back to me, assuming I do a good job with them? And by the way, guys, you can change the script to be in that simple language I just used. I'm cool with that, okay? The key is get good at the script because everybody you meet can pretty much receive this script. Almost anyone. I mean, I guess you get into like healthcare and someone who's a nurse doesn't need any business or maybe like a, a high school English teacher doesn't need any business, but you'll be shocked. There's a lot of people out there. The majority of them do. Okay. They want more sales. They want more something, right? Check this script. It's a follow-up script after referring a client to a vendor. Okay. So just, so let's say I just referred someone to John, the carpenter. Hey, John, the carpenter, I'm John Smith of ABC Realty. And I just gave your contact information to some of my clients that need your carpentry services. They got some bad cabinets. Okay. Their name are John and Sandy Smith. So they should be reaching out to you. Um, would it be okay if I gave you their contact information as well so that you can reach out to them? That way it will be sure that you cross paths. That'd be great. Here's their name, John and Sandy Smith. Here's their name. Here's their email address. If they don't hear from you first, call them. And that way you connect. Just tell them I told you to call them too. Great. Hey, by the way, John the Carpenter, I'd also like to continue to refer clients your way in the future too. In fact, I'm in the process of contacting various businesses that I can refer to my clients and include on a list of preferred businesses and service providers to give them. I would also include this list on my real estate website, blah, 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 my app, all that different stuff too. Would you be interested in being included? So after I send you a business, I'm going to then follow up. I'm going to use that new client that I sent to you. I'm going to use that as my way to get it past your gatekeeper to you and get you to join my professional network. So if you refer a client to someone, always use it as a way to establish it. Assuming he says yes to that, I say, great. I'm looking to develop these professional referral partnerships to help grow each other's businesses. So if I continue to refer clients to you, would you be willing to refer your clients and friends that are looking to buy or sell a home to me? Excellent. So it looks like you already owe me one because I gave you one right off the bat. 
I'm not kidding. You better get on it so that I have to keep sending business your way in return. Does that sound like a good plan to you? Like I want to push each other. Someday we're going to celebrate 30 years from now on a beach talking about how we started this relationship and how much money we've made by moving forward with it. Right? Okay. Another script on here saying the same thing. Hi, this is John Smith with ABC Realty, and I was making a list of the best businesses, services, and products in the area for all our new customers and your business. John, the carpentry shop, came to mind. <laughs> I never did the carpentry thing. I don't know why I'm on that. I was calling to see if you were accepting new customers and if it would be okay if I referred clients to you. And what would be the, the best way to refer your business? Email, phone, or your website? That way I get them engaged, okay? The only thing I ask is that if you get a customer that I referred, can you just let me know so I know my efforts have been working? And since I have you on the phone, do you have two people that you refer real estate related business and questions to? Much like you, I'm always looking to build new relationships and find new customers as well. As well. If I am someone that you would feel comfortable referring business to, I would propose that we work together to generate business. You might be impressed by all the marketing our company does and how that could help your business as well. Maybe we could talk later in person or even on the phone or via Zoom about some of our joint marketing ideas. So we approach that way. Another script to grow that vendor list. Hi, this is John Smith with ABC Realty and I'm reaching out to you for a recommendation. I'm attempting to enhance the customer service that I provide by expanding the list of trusted professionals and business vendors that I recommend to my clients. So whether it's a financial planner, auto mechanic, or anyone that has done work around your home, who do you know that did a great job for you that I can recommend more business to? So this is me just calling my SOI, trying to find out who their vendors are. Thank you. Would, I, would you mind if I mentioned that you referred me when I reach out to them? Great, one last question. If you were to run into anyone looking to buy or sell real estate, would you be willing to refer them to me? Great. Now you can ask them for their referral as well too. Make sense? So these are different scripts for different ways you could use it. Basically, any conversation you have, whether it's with just someone in your SOI and you're looking for a vendor, whether you're talking to a vendor, whether you refer to a vendor, or whether it's someone who needs a vendor, we're all doing it and asking for business in a way that helps someone. If it feels like you're being too pushy or salesman -y, it means you're lacking on the contribution part. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not selling what you can do or will do for them well enough, even to yourself, okay? So here's some action steps from that. Action step number one, I want you to add five new business referral partnerships per week. So every week, I want you to have five new people on your vendor list. I showed you a list of like, what was that? Like 150 people. And I told you you need to go three deep. So we could be at this for 10 years. So I'd like for you to establish five new ones per week that are not on your list right now. If you have no list right now, that should be pretty easy to start with. Add five a week. You may have to reach out to people you don't know to fill in some of the blanks on your list. The other key thing is we got to create a preferred vendors list, right? So we got to start that list. Um, I'd probably put it on Excel to start since you can edit it, move it around and change it. You can put hyperlinks to websites in it. That way you have a list. You can save it as a PDF if you want to give it to people and show it to people. We can pop it up on your website later with links and stuff like that to their websites. It's always good for the, to link to them and then ask them to link back to your website. That really helps your online presence by linking back and forth. So you build your vendor list and I want you to add five people a week to it. It's as simple as that. If you'd like, we could say make 10 contacts a day. You know, that'd be 50 contacts a week to try to get five people to join. So like a 10 to one ratio. I don't think you're gonna be that bad of a ratio. What I really want is the five new members of your vendor list. So reach out to people till you get your five. I want you to create your vendor list. And that's it. That's your vendor referral partnerships.